Uh, in this segment, I'm going to talk about small grain varieties. We're going to talk about barley, durum wheat, and the spring wheat varieties, and kind of the, what has done well out here in the uh, southwest North Dakota. Our first uh, crop will be barley. Uh, as if you've been to the tours in the past, you know, there's kind of been a change in that in the malting industry where all they're really wanting is two row barleys. And actually this year, the only six row barley we have in the trials tradition, kind of a long-term check, still kind of a popular variety for some of the maltsters, but they are actually all the industry, even the, you know, the domestics are switching over to two rows. As far as what's done well out here in the Western part of the state, uh, Indigenesis is the variety to actually that when we look over as far as three year averages, uh, Genesis actually has been the variety that actually has the top yield, but with that also has quality. It has uh, really good plump values and also will be the lowest protein, which is what they're looking for in the malting industry is actually lower protein. So this variety kind of has it all. It is adapted well out here, does good yields, but also has good quality to where it, uh, it actually has good plump values and good protein percents. Uh, the, there has been other entries into this trial. The companies, uh, you know, Bush Agar and Lemon Green have stuck some other things in here that actually have yielded good out here, but just haven't had that quality, especially with the protein. They're often at least a percent higher in protein than Genesis is. So when I look at a variety that's adapted for out here, Indy Genesis is the one I'm going to recommend for barley. So the next crop we we're going to talk about is Durham wheat. Uh, we had a couple new releases in 2017, Indy Grano, Indy Rivland out of the Indy SU programs. Uh, Indy Grano was released for the north central part of the state because it did well at the Minot location. Rivland is a variety that has done very well out west. Now both of these varieties are low cadmium accumulating varieties, which isn't really an industry for the domestics, but is always concerned as far as exporting into Europe. Uh, Canada has a variety called Strongfield, which is low cadmium. There's always been some concern they might lower the amount of cadmium they allow. We have soils, sometimes we can have high cadmium accumulation in our Durham. Uh, these two are low. Uh, Rivland has done well out here in the west. It yields the same as Joppa, um, but it also has really better, even a little bit better quality than Joppa. So it actually has good end use quality. It actually has good protein. It actually has better scab tolerance than, than many of the other Durham's. So we're still not anywhere the level we are with spring wheats. If we get a year like last year where we're having a lot of rainfall at that flowering time, uh, Indy Rivlin's still gonna be looking at that fungicide uh, application. But if you're looking at switching Durham varieties, uh, Rivlin is the one that is, shines out here west and then the one I would look at, at switching for. Another interesting thing we did see last year at the Dickinson station, he gets all his protein samples done at the Southwest Green Durham Tournament. And he actually sent them the samples. They just have plot numbers on it. When he went to pick up the results, he commented, well, these three actually had really highest quality, just look far better than everything else. And we know last year was kind of kind of crummy as far as quality. And when he went and looked up what those plot numbers were, those were all the Indy Rivlin plots. So it's one last year that for whatever reason actually held its quality the best also when we got in a little tough climate. So just another aspect looking like another reason to recommend Rivlin for our region. Okay, the next crop we're gonna talk about is our spring wheat varieties. And this one becomes a little more difficult. Uh, we have a lot of new varieties every year. It's not uncommon for me to have eight, 12 new varieties a year. I kind of looked it up. Over the last four years, we've actually had 35 new varieties released for the Northern Plains. So this starts to look a whole lot more like corn and soybeans anymore. There's a lot of information to sift through and look for. So this is actually where you're gonna be looking where that information in that guide, that variety guide that we put out every year on spring wheat that has all the yields from all the locations, but also has their disease ratings or quality ratings. And you can look for information on that. I know last year people were looking for falling numbers information and like, is there falling numbers info on varieties? Yes, there is. It's in this publication. We actually do get that quality samples. It, it is a year behind, but they actually are some differences between the varieties, how they naturally respond as far as falling numbers. So anyway, I kind of got the stakes lined out here, varieties we're gonna talk about. I didn't put them in front of the plot because we'd have to do a lot of jogging around to get to them because we have 53 varieties out here uh, this year, somewhere along those lines. So I just kind of want some, so I wanted to highlight here. Uh, the first one I have on there, that LCS Trigger, I just put that on there because this is the top yielding variety that we've had at this location. Um, the downside to that, very low protein. Um, it's actually one they released for the eastern part of the state, but they discovered actually that it did well out west. Um, and it does yield very well, just does not have protein. And then kind of this NIST group I have in here, this is kind of those group where it's kind of yield or yielding protein. Um, Shelly is one out of uh, Minnesota, medium maturity. 
uh, has a good uh, disease package, monitor resistance as far as a uh, scab, um, and it's actually been one that's had really good yields, kind of average protein. So maybe a little more on the yield side, a little more average on the protein. Lang, that is actually another one from uh, Minnesota, another medium early maturity, medium height, um, has a really good disease package, has good test weight and protein, probably yielding a, just slightly less than Shelly, but it's gonna have a little bit higher in, higher in protein. Now this Lanning is an interesting one. Um, actually, it's actually had really good yields. The 2018 is one of our uh, top varieties uh, out here. Um, average as far as protein, it does have uh, high gluten content. And what's interesting about that one, there's a couple things. One thing, it has a gene in it for longer stay green. So it's one of them, as that, as that green matures, it's supposed to hold its green a little longer, which hopefully leaves some better green feel. This also has some aluminum tolerance. So when we get up here closer, like that New England up at the Dickinson area where we're having some low pH soils, this one's one that looks like it hopefully responds a little better when we have those low pH soils that we're having to deal with. Cy Rockford, that is a uh, Sagenta AgriPro variety that's targeted to the Western out here. Uh, good as far as fuller disease, uh, okay as far as scab, good protein. A little less than yield, but does have that good protein value. And then that last one there is uh, Ellingen, uh, NDSU variety. That's actually been around for a little bit out here, but this guy continues to shine out here, especially when we have a drier year like this one. I, I expect to actually see this perform well again. Even last year, you'll see it, it was above the average. You know, year in and year out, it's a variety that's got good yield and has good protein to it. So that's what I said, that's kind of my group, that's kind of that yield protein. This next group here, this is our high quality wheats. Uh, that ND Froberg, that actually is a new release out of the program, actually it's just a July 2020 release, just coming out of that program. Uh, what kind of targeted actually as a Glen? What we're looking at this one, it's a high quality variety like Glen, but it's going to yield a few, you know, four to five bushel better than Glen, what I've seen in my trials. Um, is stock going to be at the top end like it is at the trial there? Uh, but it is going to have good protein, uh, good quality characteristics. Um, I've only had it a couple of years out here, so we'll see how that responds, you know, over the long haul. If you actually are interested in seeing it in something bigger than a drill step, I actually have one of my two acre blocks planted to Froberg, um, and I'll have that, uh, a sign on that, and it'll be off Airport Road. You can take a look at that, come to the center. Uh, ND Vip Pro, that's actually the, uh, the, a little bit earlier release out of, uh, the NDSU program. Uh, also a very high quality wheat. Um, it's probably been, it's usually average or slightly bow as far as yield, but its name stands for vitreous kernel high protein. So once again, look at it, a high quality wheat. Maybe it doesn't have that top end yield potential, but actually is a consistent performer out here. And then Bulls is actually one out of Minnesota. This consistently is the highest protein variety in the trial. It does not have that yield, but it does have really good quality. If I am actually really going for protein, that's the variety that's going to bring me the protein. Like I said, it is always, always the top protein. You know, I have 50 varieties in this trial, and this guy will be at the at the top. Now these last ones here, just some unique characteristics. That uh, Cy uh, Longmere, that's actually a new one from Sagenta. That is a full solid stem variety, and we I know we've had pockets where we're seeing Sawfly come up again, and this variety actually has performed well out here. And when I look over results, it's significantly better as far as yield than Mott, the last kind of our best variety several years ago released when we had, you know, Softlight. That variety's been around 10 years or better. So Longmere, I think, is one you can look at if, we, if you know you're going to have some Softlight concerns. And like I said, it looks to me like that's kind of our best yielding auction as far as a, a solid stem type variety. And then this last one here, actually, this SY611 CL2. That is a clear field two gene variety. I uh, haven't seen a lot of need for that out of here. This is one where if you're looking for another option for some grass control, where I can use that beyond the, on there that gives me some uh, grass control options for, that, for those wild oats, for those foxtails, those kind of things. It's not something I'm gonna use every year. I think it's something I'm gonna be targeted where I have some fields of a problem. The other thing about this variety, actually, it has been one of the top form varieties out here as far as yield. Its protein's been slightly below average. Like I said, I see that one just kind of a niche for where people are looking to take control of some certain issues. 
So that's the ones that John kind of likes for this region. There are other ones I think that work good too. We have some new things that, uh, you know, maybe we only have a year on them so far that, you know, I want to see how they perform a little better out here, but we'll be looking at it once again. I think we probably have about 10 new varieties in this trial again this year, and we'll see how hopefully things perform. Like I said, looking at it, it's going to be a tough year, but we also have to see how these things perform in drought. So hopefully, like I said, look for that extension publication this fall to look for how those spring wheat results sort out. Thank you.